First load of the day for you. Ah, first one from the field today. Oh, okay. You've already been to the elevator. Yeah, I've been to only once. Got fuel. And now we're heading back. Did you get us any donuts? No, I did not. They didn't have any free ones, so well, I didn't get any. What good are you if you didn't get us donuts? What can I say? We save on the calories that way. Oh, yeah. You know, we're, we're a health. Oh, we're so, true to all the health, you know, all the health. So benefits. now it's calories. But if that's I was right. buying. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So we got probably what, 20, 25 miles? 21. 21 miles one way. 21 one way. To either elevator, I think, would be pretty close. Maybe a little closer to the Browns elevator. Oh, really? Yeah. We're going to only, they were paying more. Yeah, so. Penny's seeing that up. So you bought this truck brand new, right? Brand new. 1986, right? 1988. Oh, okay. You see, 226, 1988. Look at that. Yeah, still got her. You were trucking full time at that full point. Full time hauling grain. Yeah, hauling grain for uh, commercially. Okay. And he enjoyed those days. He enjoyed those days. Met a lot of great people. Yeah, I think it's similar to what we're doing now with the Tractor Time with Tim stuff. Oh, we're meeting a lot of my. people, and that makes one of the most fun parts. Today. That's what's it made it enjoyable more than the, the work was work, and but it was fun. The uh, the drivers were fun when we uh, were together, and we had uh, a lot of experience. And had a lot of fun, and unique experiences. Go to unique farms meet the, and haul off the individual farmers and, and back then there were a lot more uh, farms. The uh, grain hauling has really changed. So you hauled last 30 so years. So back then a lot of the farmers had just kind of regular two-ton trucks so they yeah. it was hard for them to deliver it to the to the elevator to the which terminal. Yeah. which is basically the, the terminal on the river where it, where it would be exported yeah, from. Yeah or right? even the rail terminals. The farmer would uh, haul into his own small grain bins with a tractor wagon or a small truck like in the winter time or summertime then we would uh, take the uh, grain to the final destination which could be uh, like I say the rail terminal for mostly for corn uh, which that grain would go to southeast to feed the chickens poultry farms and the uh, uh, Soybeans would go to the river, river terminal, the Ohio River terminal at Mount Vernon, Indiana. Uh, mainly, then they would be shipped out. Now they have a processing facility there, and so they ship out the meal or and the oil to uh, oh, oil goes who knows where. And uh, and I think I think they grind most of that uh, their beans there that get shipped out to the export. Okay, so or it will go down Mississippi River out New Orleans to the, to the export market. Okay, so instead of sending the whole soybean, they send they do they the initial do processing. The, they do the processing, and, and that means they don't have to ship that, much. That, that actually adds value, and that's a good thing for us to ship product rather than the whole soybeans. Okay, uh, I'll be honest. Um, I would rather see them even go one step farther and uh, ship actually the meat products which I think give would be is a better value for our country and our economy to actually ship the, the finished pork product or, or beef. Okay, so in other words, feed it. Feed, feed it right the, here Feed the, the meal here, yes. And the processing plant down there processes 90 plus thousand bushel every day. They grind 90,000 bushel of soybeans every day. And, uh, Do they process the corn as well? There is a processing plant down there. Actually, there are two locations that uh, grind corn into ethanol at Mount Vernon, Indiana. And uh, so, despite all the politics about ethanol, there's still a lot of ethanol production from corn. Well, yeah, there sure is, and uh, it's being put to good use. We're glad to be able for the uh, companies to be able to use the product. Otherwise, we'd have corn everywhere right now if we yeah. didn't weren't able to use it in the ethanol industry. I, I realize that sometimes it gets a bad a bad rap, but my goodness, you just look at the cornfields out. Uh, we are farmers 
<laughs> the worst enemy. We're figuring out how to grow more bushels, and, and uh, so yeah. But it's nice to have the reserves too. But we, we have the reserves. If we need yeah. it for for food, yes. we can. You know, the economics of the situation will dictate how it gets used. and That's for sure. That's capitalism at its best. Yeah. So we've got roughly a thousand bushels on here, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. We will be uh, adding right up to the uh, elevator facility. And this uh, is a real facility that we'll send. Uh, that corn will all go to the southeastern uh, poultry market. Carolinas, okay. Georgia, or Florida. Gold Kist, I think, has been... Via rail? Via rail, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it'll be all railed out in unit trains, uh, 75 car trains. Okay. Uh, so I have a real basic question for you, Tom. Uh, I think some people hear this term all the time, and why do they call it an elevator? <laughs> I always wondered that when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. I mean, the elevator, I went up and down in at the store, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I haven't seen an elevator like that at any of these. Well, actually, they, they do have one or two of those, but... <laughs> but well, <laughs> they somehow have to get the grain to the top of the bin. And uh, there is a uh, piece of equipment that is called a grain leg now but I think it is actually a grain leg elevator as it picks up grain in small buckets on a belt that are mounted on a belt, takes it up to the way high so that it can gravity feed the, the bins that are sprawled out. Now, obviously the times are different, but they still have and use, these are big legs now, these legs, a lot of them are rated at 20,000 bushel per hour. Okay, so nowadays a lot of the farmers have those legs too, but the backers back, have their own legs. But yeah. back in the day, it was a big deal to have a, anything that could yes. lift that grain up yeah. high enough to get it to, into a, a storage bin or then into the train car or anything like that. Now we actually, when, we, when I was a little, uh, Dad did before uh, Tim's time here, we used an elevator. And it was actually called an elevator, a, a corn elevator that put the ear corn up on the ear. And basically what its purpose was, was to raise the, the corn up, to pile it, it up. Makes, it makes sense what you're it saying. Put it, it in it the building. It elevates the grain. It elevates the grain. Uh, and that's the term, where the term elevator comes from. Well, here, here's an example right here. This is our cousin's grain leg, and it goes all the way up there to the top. You dump the grain here at the bottom, and it and it takes it all the way to the top, and then it can distribute it to any of those bins. That through it, those pipes, it. yes, through the pipes. And uh, the other bins get filled with an air system that uh, has uh, that's a little more flexible. But but uh, there is a way that grain has to go to the top of that structure before it can uh, be. Uh, and I have a few of those buckets in my shed. Uh, you can see them in my shed. We might even put some video in here. Those blue buckets that I've got on that belt, they're out of a grain leg. They're out of a leg, I think, from the elevator at uh, Brown's. Okay, one of the and, elevators that you uh, used. They, were, they would be from a big leg. I think they're one of the, the big main legs. So you, you imagine one of those things probably 500 feet long, the, the whole belt, if, it, if it's 250 feet up on the yeah, leg. Yeah, I doubt if the belt, the leg's much higher than 200, somewhere that catch a lot so of that, them. You know, that close to 500 150. Oh, okay. So, yeah, no. so some, you know, it'd be the, the, the belt would be 300 to, yeah. to, to 500 feet long, and it would have those buckets every few inches. And it, I don't know how fast it runs, but... Uh, 20,000 bushel per hour, you're saying? 20,000 like bushel per hour is what those legs are rated at, and uh, they will do it. They will take a truck and dump the, what the grain goes into a, what we call a pit, where it is a container that is uh, below ground level, and it will hold the whole load of, the, of what the trailer holds. Maybe we can see that on the video when we get to the elevator. Yeah, if they'll let us video, and I think we can. That pit then holds the grain until it can get over, run into, let's see, there was a, there would be a, either another belt as a, in the, or an auger that uh, uh, runs the grain over to the, to the main leg, where it then would be distributed. This 
this is a consolidated grain and barge only Illinois facility. One of the t figures I heard was about a 15 million bushel handle per year. So your finger gets tired now when yeah, you have to right. untar. It does. What can you say? Okay, now we got to fill out a ticket. Yeah, what goes on here? This looks like a new thing. So no longer just yelling out the door who it belongs Don't to? Don't yell the door who it belongs to. Now then you fill out a paper, and if it's wrong, it's your own fault. Okay. Which is actually good, especially. So we used to always just yell out the door. They come up and they'd ask who it's, who's it for, and you'd just yell how you wanted to divide it because sometimes it is crop share. Some names on these, some of these tickets are, are unreal. You'd be surprised how many splits and how many different percentages, and how many names are on a, on a farm. Some ticket. of the other folks have. Yeah, on some them. of the hired loads that I used to haul for, they had. Oh, okay. So they would have estate situations where they had already yeah, divided they'd it. Have, they'd have a name. They'd be four or five names on a load ticket. Wow. No wonder they want you to write it down. Yeah. So we're here at the probe stand and they're probing the grain and then you have to use this little card here to, it's sort of like the security card readers at the door. Yeah. At my workplace. So, I will put the card reader right there. Put the ticket in the okay. bank, just like going to the bank. Just like going to the bank if you don't lose it all. I did it, I couldn't figure out why that thing wouldn't go up there. We have been probed. Now we are waiting on the green light. Dirty shirt. 